Good afternoon and welcome back to the 120s. Today we are talking about the Kawa 6. Of course it's not Kawa 6, it's Koa 6. It's a Japanese camera, Japanese medium format camera shooting 6x6 frames on 120 film. Manufactured between 1968 and 1974, so uh, pushing, what's that, 50, 55 years old. Um, very similar to other cameras that were on the market at the time, specifically the Bronica S2, S2A, EC, uh, the Hasselblad 500 series, uh, and they were going after the same market of those um, medium format 6x6 uh, cameras. I think you'll agree with me, it is a good looking camera. Relatively well thought of, it was thought to produce some pretty solid images. The lenses are supposed to be very good. There were quite a few lenses brought out for this camera, although unlike the Bronica and also the Hasselblad 500 series most and the Hasselblad V system cameras, the lenses weren't really shared. Kawakoa didn't make that many cameras. And so the it, lenses are not that easy to find. There aren't that many of them still out on the market. And so they will set you back a few quid these days. The Kawa 6, Kawa 6 uses a leaf shutter in the lens. Um, it does not have a focal plane shutter. Uh, so very similar to Hasselblad's, the Hasselblad 500 series in that sense, obviously unlike the uh, Bronicas. However, unlike some leaf shutter cameras, this obviously does have a mirror system and it still makes something of a satisfying clank when you fire the shutter. Let's have a listen. It's quite nice, not a bad sound. Not the, um, not the same, you know, world ending crash of a Bronica, but, but uh, not unsatisfying. Nice. Overall though, nice looking camera. Feels solidly built. Um, so let's find out what sort of photos it takes. Uh, I have actually already been out and shot with it uh, a couple of weeks ago when I did those dry tin types. I took the Kawa 6 with me uh, and took some photos of Marsha while we were there. So let's see how we got on with that. Right then, I'm out with the Kawa 6, um, with the, the lovely Marsha again. Um, and we come down to Winterbourne and we're gonna have a little wander around and see what we see. Uh, and I'll just take some, uh, some snaps as we wander around. Um, I have some Fuji Pro 400H loaded. Uh, uh, I've got two rolls of that with me. I've got one roll of HP5. So we'll see how we get on with that. It's, get, it's early evening. It's just coming up to seven o'clock and the light is starting to go. Um, I think that should be enough. So we'll just have a wander around and see what we get. Yep, right. I'm going to do one just along the, um, along the line of this here. So if you just want to like, just stand somewhere there. Uh, a bit closer for me, please. Yeah. And into, in towards the bushes of fraction. And then, there we go, lovely. Uh, so let's go for, let's, in fact, let's stick at 28, 500. Uh, this is, I've got waist up. All right, I'm ready to rock. Three, two, one. Let's move a bit further. Let's go around that side. So just stand in there, you see that leaf is? Somewhere like that. That leaf there, oh, not that leaf. Oh, kidding, kidding, that's the right leaf. This is beautiful. Well, I'm getting a little bit of lens flare though, which is gonna be interesting. But if I can get this right, then this is lovely. The light on you is just wonderful. Let's go, okay, all right, so let's go 500 to eight. Uh, so we're gonna try and do a few photos here. It is starting to rain, but I think we're gonna get away with it. Okay, let's get that chin down a tiny bit. Beautiful, hold that please. And three, two, one. That was a massive fish. Is that a fish? Yeah. It was huge. I just assumed it was a duck. No, that was a fish. <laughs> that was crazy. All right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> film that we're shooting at the moment, this Fuji Pro 400H, is literally my favourite film stock. It's uh, the colours on it are just gorgeous. Right, let's move a little bit, but not too far, because I don't want to get too far away from this wonderful light. We are loaded and ready to go. I'm enjoying the, the, how this camera's working so far. It's lovely. Um, yet to see what it's going to look like. If anything, this sun's a little bit strong now. 506.3, so it's a little bit brighter than we were before. Yeah, so let's do, let's follow that. Let's take it to 5.6. Had some interesting um, reflections off the pond to kind of 
moving up and down your face. Smile or no smile? Sounds like a game show. Wait for the car. Lovely. Hold that please. Three, two, one. Do you want to come a little bit closer? Chin down a tiny bit, come a tiny bit closer. But let's move down that way a little bit and let's get some open fields behind you. Okay. You can sort of rest on that wall a little bit. Yeah, yeah lovely. Okay, perfect, all right. I'm gonna get nice and close for this one as well. Wonderful light, let's come around this way a little bit. So again, get rid of that lamp post. Just hold that, that pose, you're perfect for the minute. Just need to, there, gorgeous. All right, nice and still for a minute. Three, two, one. <laughs> Literally, everywhere we go at the moment, there's a horse writhing around in the field there, right over Marsha's shoulder. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting great wildlife at the minute. Here we go, three, two, one. Right, so that's that, two rolls through the Kawa 6. Uh, so I'll take those back and develop them. Uh, as I was saying during that shoot, if even half of those come out, I'll be super chuffed because that light was gorgeous. Marsha, thank you so much again. Um, uh, really appreciate you being patient with me and um, pulling all the faces. And uh, I look forward to showing you the photos. I think some of those could be good. Yeah, I look forward to it Put too. my money where my mouth is now, right? <laughs> How about those? They were pretty good, weren't they? I'm pretty chuffed with those. Super sharp. Um, I thought the Kara handled it really well, especially for a camera of that kind of era. Uh, I did have the light slightly behind Marsha for a lot of those shots, because it's a beautiful angle. Um, and the camera handled it really well. No lens flare, no ref reflections. Um, and those images were just tack sharp, weren't they? I'm super happy with those. Even if you push right the way into it, we're really getting a lot of detail out of that. So pretty good performance, I would say, so far. But obviously, just portraits does not make a camera. So uh, I'm heading out tomorrow morning uh, for a bit of a walkabout. I'll take the Kawa 6 with me. Koa 6. Uh, did I do that at the beginning? I'm thinking I did the beginning. I think, I think I'm thinking now I might have said Kawa 6 at the beginning. Koa 6. So we'll head out in the morning with the Koa 6 and uh, see what sort of shots we get. All right, see you out there. All right then, we are out and about walking the Froome Valley Trail this morning. Uh, no, Froome River? I don't know, whatever. I'm out down somewhere in South Gloucestershire, somewhere towards Frampton Cottrell. Right, I've changed the film. Uh, we now have a uh, roll of HP5 in to 400 or so. But I also noticed that I did want to do some checks when I was, um, when I had the film out, because uh, the shutter was doing some odd things, uh, and it does appear that we've got some issues with the shutter. Right then, uh, we're going to shoot something here. Uh, I am going to shoot wide open, so as not to test the slow shutter speeds. So I won't be getting any um, blurry waters. Well, the water's not that good here anyway. And I'm going to listen out, and you can listen out too, uh, for the shutter and whether it's working. The first thing that you hear is a big clunk of the mirror coming out of the way. Uh, and then the leaf shutter comes after that, so it kind of goes clunk, click. And it's the click that we're listening for, and it's the click that I wasn't hearing. And you can come and get in nice and close with me, and we'll listen out for that click. Not sure, not sure. Oh, what the fuck is happening now? Okay, that seems all right. Right then, I'm gonna watch. Let's do one more, see if we can see it. I am not seeing that shutter going, you know. I don't think it's opening. Right. Well, this is a total waste of, uh, Waste of film. I mean, it is, it's humid this morning. It's really, it's like damp. Um, and I broke it. Yeah. Um, 
After I got back and developed the film, I actually realized that by the time I was aware the shutter wasn't firing properly, it actually hadn't been firing properly for quite a while. Uh, show you the rolls that came back. This is mostly what they look like. Couple of frames on the end there from the very beginning. But otherwise, completely clear. There we go, that is a nice chunk, isn't it? That is a, uh, that's a, that's a good roll, that is, yeah. <sighs> so yeah, so that wasn't working, it broke, it's uh, screwed. Um, interestingly, I think, I think that it is now working. I just um, took out the bag and just uh, wound on and, uh, that is, that's, that's firing again now. Yeah, that shutter's firing again. Oh, the joys of, yeah. So that's firing again. Maybe I didn't like the cold, it wasn't very cold. Uh, long story short, I think the uh, lens needs a service. So it's 50 years old, this happens. The, the grease that was put on those gears when it was first made, if it hasn't been serviced since, um, will gradually gather grime and, and it will, the, the grease will become less lubricating until it reaches a point where it just gums up. Um, often triggered by the cold, that's a, a well-known thing. You take these cameras out in the cold and suddenly that grease um, that is full of gunk and full of crap uh, solidifies in the cold and everything freezes, everything jams up. It wasn't that cold when I headed out the other day, but that could be it. We're back in the warm and the dry now, and it seems to be working fine again. But of all the things that could go wrong with it, I wouldn't really describe that as a major reliability concern. Um, it's easily fixable. Lens needs a service, shutter needs a service. You know, you take it apart, you clean it up, you put uh, a couple of dabs of oil on the right parts, and, and it's like new again. So despite the problems that I had, I would actually highly recommend this. Uh, I was uh, blown away by those portraits we took with Marsha. I just thought they were uh, fantastic. Some of the uh, nicest portraits I've taken in some time. So I do think it's a great camera. I think it's a, uh, a nice looking camera. I think it's solidly built. It does remind me and is very much of the same era as uh, Hasselblad 500CM and the, and the Bronica S2A. They were making cameras, Japanese were making cameras in a certain way at that time and this absolutely fits the mold. And it is a high quality camera. Um, it's not, you know, one of the budget options. This was probably quite expensive at the time and it tells, you know, you can, you can tell the difference in build quality. The lenses, or certainly this one, this is the 85mm 2.8 uh, tack sharp. If you're interested in the Kara 6 and you're thinking about getting one, I recommend you head over to uh, Analog Digest. It's a new YouTube channel run by a guy called Steve, um, and he has recently reviewed the Kara 6. He is a very, very clever man, has been a photographer for years, really knowledgeable on the Kara 6, so I would recommend his uh, review and run through of the Kara 6 if you're interested in a Kara 6. Go and check it out, go and take a look. Um, Lots coming up on the channel. If you're not currently subscribed, please do subscribe. We've got the Fuji GX680, which I have uh, manufactured a battery holder for and is now working. Uh, so that's exciting. We're gonna take that one out, put a test roll through. Pretty sharp images, pretty crazy. Not too sure what I'm gonna do with it. It's almost like worse than a large, than a large format monorail camera to carry around. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with the damn thing, it's massive. Um, we've also got Kiev 60, Pentacon 6. Uh, got some really interesting photographic techniques coming up. Um, the wonderful Samuel A over at Stenopeka Cameras uh, saw the tin types video and decided that I really needed to try this new thing. I think it's a collaboration between Stenopeka and uh, Bellini um, where they are creating a black and white paper reversal kit. Uh, so you get some photographic paper, they provide you with some chemicals and you essentially create a kind of a direct positive. Um, it's, there's a few steps there. It's not, there is direct positive paper out there. This isn't that, you use standard black and white paper and then through a process of, of bleaching, I haven't tried it yet, but this is as I understand it, through a process of bleaching, developing uh, and re-exposing, you end up with a positive image on your uh, standard photographic paper. Also got, very exciting, I'm gonna be able to find it now because it's so freaking small, that. 
Alfie Camera Titch. We met Dave Faulkner back at the first Analog Spotlight event uh, where he told us about this and he told us about his plans to hit TikTok, which he duly did. Uh, and his Kickstarter campaign went fantastically. I backed it on Kickstarter. He hasn't sent this to me for free. 35 mil half frame. This it says four lenses. Mine only actually has three because I'm a cheapskate and I went for the cheap version. So, but how about that for a, a little pocketable camera? Very excited about uh, taking that out for a spin. Uh, so that's going to be coming up on the channel soon as well. Loads of stuff, loads and loads of stuff. Glass plates, more tin types. We're going to do tin types. Take two. Uh, we're going to have another go at that because let's face it, I made a bit of a pig's ear the first time round, and I don't feel like I did it justice. So I'm going to do it again. Loads coming up, make sure you're subscribed, and that's it, goodbye.